problem with any audience? If no, that no. means if mic is off, that means they are able to listen. Yeah, okay, the voice is good. The picture is good. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, today we will start to share with you a sort of uh, Oracle EBS uh, reporting tool, which while exploring I really liked it. So I thought let me recommend to the community and uh, give some awareness as that okay such tools are available why we are struggling with such things which are very basic uh, in nature are standard because since ebs is a standard application worldwide and better to use best practices or standard uh, practices so i came across this uh, very nice tool uh, which uh, andy and his team was developing for last maybe 10 years so this is quite mature and it has very good nice features and uh, it will include your uh, existing um, BI reports as well, uh, publisher reports as well, uh, plus new uh, reports you can add, uh, and so, uh, uh, very nice features. And directly it will give uh, export to the Excel. So user normally they want data in Excel. And even if you give uh, authority to the user, they can create their own reports, they can select their own columns to be included, things like that. So I would request uh, Mr. Andy to go through, uh, take us through this uh, nice tool so we can have some sort of uh, awareness of this tool. Thank you very much for all to join and please Andy, uh, over to you. So I will switch off my mic. Thank you. Okay, good. Thanks for the introduction. So yeah, uh, let me start straight away with the the idea of the tool. Uh, we. We developed this tool basically because we, we all in our company, we all have a consulting background and we were working for um, large EBS implementations and, and especially myself, I write a lot of SQL statements in, in when I worked on EBS projects and many people came to me and asked uh, for ad hoc data exports. So because they couldn't get it from the BI tools that these companies were using and then and so I always wrote an SQL statement, ran it in Toad or SQL Developer, and then exported it to Excel, and then sent it by email to these people. And then a week later, they came again and asked for the same data, or it's the same export again. And I had to do it again and again. And, and that's why we came up with a, with a solution about uh, 10 years back, or even longer already, uh, on a project where we created a custom form inside the Eberson Suite navigation where um, as a developer myself, I could just uh, save store an SQL statement in the form. And then I, I could assign it or give it to the users and they could run it and they got the CSV output back then. So it was just text separated, but it was very successful because it was a very simple solution and was very much used by that project. And then we developed a company and developed another 10 years with a team of developers making that, that same idea perfect. And now it's called the Blitz report. And the Blitz report is a form which is directly inside the EBS Suite navigation. So the idea is to have it available in all your responsibilities when, when users work with EBS that they can quickly access it. And then they see the list of reports that it can uh, run. Now I, I have the developer access, that's why I see so many reports. Typically the users, they only see a restricted view of reports that they are allowed to run. But as a developer, you can see everything. And then they can select a report um, and run it. And then it starts a background process and generates the output in Excel. And it's, it's really just one mouse click. And I just even use the keyboard navigation because I'm so used to it and it's quicker. And it runs the Excel and um, yeah, it runs the concurrent process which produces an Excel file. And then the output looks like this. And it's a real Excel file. Uh, one question, is the screen big enough or can everyone see it? Because sometimes I get, uh, can everyone oh, it's see okay. the screen? It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. okay. It's visible. So we have the, the Excel file looks like this. We have it also optimized so that uh, it has the auto filter set already and the first line fixed so that you could start working with the data immediately. And yeah, so that's the output. And the user interface for business users, it looks like this. So we have two views, basically. One view is the, the view for the end users, which is this one. And then we have a view for developers. So business, business users, they only see the small window and they would also not have the setup button. Uh, 
What's that question? So no question. Okay. Thank you. Carry on. Uh, so the on this window we also did some optimizations because in Oracle Standard, for example, you would need to to bring up a list of value. You would need to click on the this list of value icon, or you can use the short key. And we found that it we didn't find it very efficient because in other applications like in web applications or anything, you, you can typically just click in the field of that. Uh, of an item and then it opens the list of value and that's also what we implemented so on all these fields we have a, when mouse double click trigger because it's quicker to just click in the field than to move the mouse over this icon and so here basically up here is the selection for reports and uh, down here is then parameter restrictions and the users Andy? yes sorry uh, sorry to interrupt you uh, members are saying they cannot record so if you can enable recording as well, they might need it later because I it think need, I uh, running. Let me just check. Yes, recording okay. is running. Okay, excellent. Yes, so we Please. can send it later. Okay, so the up here users can select the reports, and also here we have done some optimization because in 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 big organizations you might end up with many many reports in the system, and the users might not easily find them. So we have integrated full text search. Uh, with um, using the Oracle Intermedia text index. So here, instead of just selecting the report name from the list of value like this, so of course they can select it from a list of value, but they could also search for it. For example, if the users don't remember the report name, but they remember they were looking for a report which contains receiving transaction, then they can look for those columns as well. So let's say receiving transaction and then the blitz report executes a full text search through all the reports you see here now it found 31 reports and it also shows the best matching uh, ranked on on the top because the intermediate index from oracle has also some ranking algorithm like like google has to show the most relevant results so it first looks in the report name and the description and also in the underlying sql statement for those uh, keywords and here, for example, the PO headers and lines report is has receiving transactions, and that's why it's found. And then it can be run like this from here. And so I just and also I mentioned every found everything runs as a background process. So here you see the stages as well. It was showing pending, and now it shows running. And once it's completed, it shows output, but it also opens the output automatically. And so this report somewhere has receiving transactions further to the right i would think yeah it has a lot of you see it has a lot of columns here's the receipt for example and the receipt date and yes so the users they might not want to see all these columns uh in when they run it they might only be interested in the certain columns and would like to reorder them and for that, we have also integrated flexibility for the business users to select the columns they would like to see. So here on the on this uh, options field, they can click on the options field and it opens a small window like this. And then it can create something which we call column template. So they can say, oh, I want to create a column template. And then by default, it shows them all the columns which are in the in that report and then they can select the ones they would like to see. For example, they can remove all of them and say they only want to see, let's say, the O number release, yeah, only certain columns, and then you can bring them across and also reorder them as required. And then the report has only those columns left, basically. And they can also store this, this uh, column template. It's very similar to the folder technology in Oracle EBS, because they also have folders that users can uh, pick and choose uh, certain items they would like to see on the form. So we have the possibility to name, to give this column template a name. Let's say, and these column template, template. And then they can share it with other users. So the default is, is set to public here in this case, so that other users can also use the selection of columns so that's the flexibility that business users have to pick and choose the columns and so then there is the 
And so this is the business user view. Uh, the real, let me also show you the integration to the concurrent manager. I just mentioned it, it, uh, everything runs as a concurrent manager. So users could also go back to the concurrent request screen. And then if something runs longer, they can retrieve the output from previous request runs from here, for example. And then click on the output is exactly the same output as they get directly from the form. This one was empty apparently, but it's it's very integrated. So that is exactly the same as Oracle from the look and feel. It's the same as Oracle standard. And yeah, so that's the business user view. And then for developers like myself, the most exciting part is this setup button here. So the, the business users, they would not have access to that. It's only for developers. And uh, when clicking on the setup button, we get directly to the SQL definition screen here. And let me show you how quickly or how easy it is to create something new, because that is the most frequent scenario that the the business wants to have some business users wants to have some data and you have an SQL statement and you want to give uh, the, uh, the SQL statement to them to run and so you will generate an Excel for them. So here we can create a new report by just creating and entering a name and then entering an SQL statement. I always use a very simple one so that I can remember it. AP suppliers, AQ, where one equals one. And then it's basically ready to run. So I, typically you would click on the run button, but I use the short key because it's for it's quicker for navigation. And then it generates the output of that um, SQL statement directly in Excel like this. So that is the, the main strength of the tool that you can really get from the SQL statement immediately to the output. And then Typically, users would want to have um, parameters to restrict, and that is done on this tab here. So we always have, for performance, uh, to achieve better performance, we have split the where clause for, that is used for parameters from the main SQL, so that it's uh, generated dynamically. It, it can also be done in a static way, but we typically use it do dynamically so for better to be able to use database indexes. So for example, if the user wants to have supplier, a supplier name parameter, they can copy the parameter definition from other already existing reports. Let's say here I have supplier parameters with this where clause and in this report here, so I can copy this one. And let me also copy a supplier number just to give you two examples supplier number parameter like this. And now we have two parameters which the users can use. And then you see the parameters, they always consist of name and secret text. Secret text is the where clause that is used when the user uses that parameter. And now when I run it, it re restricts the data to exactly that single supplier only. But then there's something else which the business users like a lot and which I'm very excited to show you that is, it's a very small thing, but it's an important thing for the, for the business. So there's this multiple values checkbox here on the left-hand side here. So typically when you have a list of value, you can only select one value, something like this. And yeah, and it depends on how the list of value and forms is set up. So in this case, it's set to validate from this, which means you have to use one, one single value only, but when you, use this multiple values checkbox here, then you can select different values uh, uh, one by either one by one from the list of value here like this. Uh, and then it is automatically semicolon separated as you see here. So, and then when it's run, it runs the report for those three values. It's a small thing, but it's, it's important for the, for the users. And so typically, so now I selected it one by one from the list of value, but what they typically do is they, they just copy a list of, let's say account numbers or vendor numbers from a different spreadsheet. So in this case, this was the extract of all the suppliers in the system. And here we have segment one, which is the supplier number. So they can also as well, just copy a list of supplier numbers from here, from an Excel sheet, and then paste it in the, in the field like this. And then the report runs exactly for these supplier numbers or yeah, 
And that is very powerful because it could be a big list of inventory item numbers or a big list of account numbers and so on. So they can use the output of one Excel uh, report as, an, as a parameter restriction for another one so that it's a little bit more uh, connected. So that is the main functionality. It's also possible, so I previously I copied these parameter definitions from different reports, but it's also possible to create something manually. For example, um, let's say if I want a date range, I could say creation date from is, is the name of the parameter. And I want to have a where clause, which is like this creation date, and it should be big or equal than let's say date from. So this is just an arbitrary name. I could also call it bind one or something, but it's good practice to just use something which is very descriptive. And then we also add a day two parameter, and then this should be smaller than day two plus one next day, and that's the date. And now we have date parameters. So for example, we could export everything that is, uh, was created before two thousand after 2007. It's an old vision environment, so that's why we need to choose such an old date. And now we have, you see, we have creation dates only from 2008 onwards. So that's the main functionality of the tool. So this is to create reports. And then, so this report, which I just created, at this moment, only developers can see and run it. If I want to make it available for business users, then I would need to assign it here on this assignment tab. And here we can assign reports on different levels. So we have Oracle Standard only has request group for concurrent processes, but we have more levels because it's then more flexible. So we can even, if the report is good for everyone in the system and everyone should be, have access to it, then we can assign it on side level. Or on the other end, if we want to have it assigned only for particular users, we can use this assignment. And then, for example, for testing purpose, or if the report is, is very specific, and then you can assign it for one user only, and then only that user is allowed to see and run it. Yeah, so that's the main functionality of the tool. Uh, should we stop for questions, or how should we, uh, or should we continue and then do questions at the end? What do you think? Any question from anyone? Any questions? Otherwise, I would continue with the some additional features. Yeah, you can continue. We okay. will take question also at the end. Okay, so we have uh, so this is the basic functionality to create reports. So we have the main SQL, then we have parameter definitions and we have assignments and one important feature is also the version history. So for example, if you modify the SQL statement, let's say I just making up some changes, then you see here the version number on the top right hand corner is increasing. And you can also click on the version number and then it opens the screen with the version history. And that's uh, for me is a very important feature as a developer because it's, uh, uh, there are no SQLs lost anymore because it's it's easier to uh, it's um, it's easier to store the SQLs than in the in this tool than on my laptop because uh, I have the whole version history and if, if I make a mistake I can easily revert back to a previous version so that's the idea of this functionality and it's also for big companies they sometimes when they have change management control they want to add a comment to a certain version so for example they could say tested and approved by uh, Glenn, something like this. And then, and then they could use these fields uh, to, uh, for change management, could explain the change, and then could enter their comments what was changed. So that is the main functionality. And we have, because it's uh, the idea of this tool is basically to provide not just reporting for business users, but also to work like a common toolbox for uh, IT teams. Because for example, everyone working with Oracle eBusiness Suite that I know of uh, has an SQL statement in, on their laptops, which retrieves 
concurrent requests by uh, various criteria. So we also have a report like that, FNE concurrent request. And the benefit of having the SQL query then in a tool like Blitz report is that if everyone, that everyone uses the same SQL query and if someone has a good idea, for example, to add in additional columns, like here you see, for example, this is a query for FNE concurrent request. And it has many, many more columns than typical uh, SQLs that consultants run on their laptop. So as you see, when we run this, it, it gives a lot of flexibility to select different processes by criteria. For example, everything running longer than, waiting longer than one minute, or let's say, let's see how many slow concurrents we have on our server. So everything running longer than one minute could be run like this. And then it produces an, an Excel file with all um, concurrent processes, which ran longer than one minute. So here, this is the mm -hmm. runtime, column M. Here, four minutes, six seconds, and so on. And oh, I'm surprised that we have, this, these are apparently slow ECC processes from, uh, looks like, anyway. So typically, oh, you see it's not that many, it's just about 100 reports. And so it's not, uh, our server is typically quite fast because we have a good uh, fast storage. So you have, in this report, you have many more columns than you have from a typical SQL from FNE concurrent request. So you also have the responsibility uh, that the report was run from the operating unit that uh, is, was set for that responsibility. And we also have uh, a column which shows the parameter display value. So typically in SQL statement, you only get the internal text like this, and you don't know then exactly what this full means. Uh, full load. In this case, we can guess it, but here we have then the translation. It says the parameter name for full load is load type and language is US, log level is error and so on. So, so you have it listed like this, which is a lot more convenient to understand what, which, what each parameter means here. And yeah, lots of more columns to investigate, uh, for example, which executables were executed and which file name locations the lock and output files have, which output file size. So sometimes when you have uh, BR publisher reports, they have the problem that they produce quite large output files because they produce XML in between. And typically these XML, they, uh, yeah, they, they can, even when they grow too large, they can even crash the output post-processor. So here we have to, and this server is not so many big ones, but I've seen on, on client environments, I have seen uh, output post-processor files of up to a gigabyte size, and then the output post-processor typically crashes or uh, gets stuck on 100% CPU load because it cannot process these large files anymore. And for that reason, so for to provide mass data export for, um, for large vol data volume, we also have an or to give relief to the BR Publisher output post-processor, we have created an import option for BR Publisher reports. So here we have various import options uh, to, for different data sources. So we can import report definitions as XML, which is to migrate them between environments. Same? And, and then we have BR Publisher. Thank you. Was there a question? No, probably not. So we have a BR Publisher import option. So when we select this one, we can select uh, BR, existing BR Publisher reports. And one which we always like to show is the all inventory values report, this one. And then we can import that report into Blitz report. And we have the, and it imports automatically the SQL statement from the, from the data source code. Here on the top right hand corner, we see the BR Publisher data source code. We can also double click here if we want to review the original data source code. Then we double click here and it general it downloads the data source so that we can easily review it. So this was the original data source from BR Publisher. Here parameter definitions, and here is then the SQL statement. And and then also this report. That's why we like to show this one uh, often is that it's also executing before report trigger to generate the data. Because in this case, the BR Publisher report is based on global temporary tables, which are populated by the Oracle standard procedure called here. 
and then it's reported based on that. So we import that SQL, we import the parameters, also the assignments so that the same users have access in Blitz report to the via publisher report than they had in the original, uh, then they had access to the original report. And then we can run it from here. And we now have the benefit that it runs a lot faster and it no longer has any file size limitations. So in BR Publisher, you have the limitation of 65,000 records per sheet. And we don't have that. We have the, we have the Excel sheet limitation of 1,048,000, but we also have an overflow. So for example, if you export 5 million records, it would create five sheets for the data. And there's always, a fifth sheet as well. The last sheet is always the parameters. So in this case here, if I click on the parameters tab, you see the 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 audit trail of the report of the data. So you see the the environment. Uh, you see the report name, the environment that it ran on, and then the date, the concurrent request ID that generated the data, the SQL statement, and so basically we add the SQL statement to the so this audit trail because the SQL is composed dynamically. So depending on the parameter selection, it could look different. So that's why we include it as well. And then we have all the parameters used by the users. And yes, but now in this case, for example, there, are the, there is a, an obsolete column, which is this one is the repeat, repeating the item code because we don't, when we import to be a publisher, we only import the data source from the XML. We don't look at the, the at the template. So there might be yeah, some beautification required on, let's say, removing this column. This can be done either in the SQL statement or the users can do it themselves by just clicking here on the column template and then saying, oh, uh, removing this column with a double click like this. And then the report no longer has that column for them. So it looks like this then. Yeah, you see, I just now it doesn't no longer has this column. So that is the functionality for the BI Publisher import. And that is uh, for our customers. It's a lot of, it's, it's often a way to run, to, to resolve the problem with the BI Publisher, not uh, processing large data volumes. So that's the idea of this import, basically. And then we also have more import options. So many customers still use Discoverer. And for Discoverer, we have also created an import option here, Discoverer worksheet. So we can import Discoverer from here and then select the worksheet. And then it imports the worksheet SQL and also parameters and creates list of values from the item classes so that users can run the exactly same Discoverer work sheet uh, report from blitz report instead and then they get the excel output in the same way it looks like this then so that is the output yeah so that is the discover import and also we basically we keep on adding new import options also for other third-party tools because we had customers migrating from excel for apps uh, to our blitz report and that's why we automated the import option here as well so that if you use Excel for apps, you can import reports automatically from here. We are currently adding more. So also for Polaris and EIS tech, we are working on automating the import options in the tool. And then we have recently created an import option for the enterprise command centers because uh, Oracle has created the enterprise command centers and the, they look, they look very nice from the dashboard, but many customers say, oh, we just want the raw data in Excel. And uh, the enterprise command center, I'm not sure if you are aware of that. Oracle released them about, I think, two and a half years ago, something like that. And we also have them installed on our demo server. And they look, they provide dashboard like functionality. Like here, for example, they have, if I go to the receivables command center, it would look like this. So this is complete Oracle standard functionality. If you're not aware of it, it's, it's worthwhile looking at it. It's, it's really good. Uh, but as I mentioned, the data export is not very good. So this is, for example, a data set for receivables. And so users, so the idea of the command center is that they can click on this, uh, yeah, on the graphics and then it refines the, the 
for the data. And then down here, there's an export option. So here, but the export option is only CSV and it's also limited to thousand record maximum. So when they click on export here, they get the CSV output and then it looks like this. So it's not very nice. So it's, it doesn't have the, it might have problems because the decimal point might not be right. And it's a CSV output. So it, it's not a real Excel, not so user friendly. And it is also not real time because this ECC data is not providing real time data. It needs to be synchronized from the Eberson suite server. And for that, we have created an import option here in the latest version of Blitz report so that we can import, let's say, let me just import exactly the same thing. So the, if we import from the ECC the outstanding receivables, we can do it like this. And then Blitz report reads the, the exactly same SQL statement that Oracle standard uses to read that ECC data. And then also we create a parameter for the organization restriction. And then, oh, let me take it out to show you that it can be run for everything. And then we have exactly that data set in Excel without limitation. So that's the integration which we currently have for Enterprise Command Center. It might also be useful for you in case you use those command centers. Yeah, so that was really a very quick walk through the main functionality. There is a lot more, uh, especially with regards to our content, because the idea of the tool is also is not to have just uh, the reports. Uh, yeah, not just to run the reports locally. We also have the idea to share all the reports that we develop with the EBS community. So we have on our web page, we have our library. So we publish all the SQL statements that we develop. Let's say the one that I was showing from the application object library, the FND concurrent request query that is here. So if you go to our library, you can see all these SQL statements. So here, this is the SQL statement that uh, I was showing earlier, uh, generating the data for FND concurrent request. And even if you don't use Blitz report, you can copy it from our library and use it on your own tools. But if you have Blitz report installed, then you can just also go to the library. And if we have a new report, then you can download the, the latest report definition from the library like this and then import it into, so it generates an XML file for the definition of that report. And then you could import it in your Blitz report so that you can run it there. And we have quite, a, quite some nice reports, especially also for IT, uh, for performance analysis, because I was working a lot on performance tuning in my consulting career. And we have them in the database administration category and the most popular report that we have there is this one, SQL AWS SQL Performance Summary. And let me show you the example data, how it would look like. So you can also click here on this uh, Excel symbol and then you see how, how the data would look like. So this is a report analyzing performance metrics of a system by looking at the AWR data, but in a much more user-friendly way than the Oracle Standard AWR HTML report. So here, for example, this is the, these are the performance metrics of the, uh, of one server of one week. So we can see from the parameters here, the time frame. So this was run on, it's already more than a year ago. It was run on the 25th of January, 2019, and was going back to the 18th. So that is about a week worth of data. And we see the top SQL. So one record is one SQL statement. And the top SQL was using 19% of the server load in one week and was coming from the custom sales or shipment inbound interface program. In, and it was this SQL statement here, which caused a problem and was executed 27 million times. And the total runtime for those 27 million executions was three days, five hours, 40 minutes in one week. And the problematic database package and code line is this one. So this is the package name. And this is the code line, which has the SQL. So you could directly go to a developer and say, oh, in this uh, concurrent process, in this database package and this code line, this SQL needs fixing or needs to be repaired to relieve the server from the performance load. 
So we have a lot of uh, reports like this and also business reports, of course, popular one for from the GL area. So we have one which shows the uh, financial figures and combines um, and we run this one as an example, 07, combines GL balance data with um, flex field hierarchies so that users would get uh, profit and loss or like a, a balance sheet like output like this. So they see on different financial periods, they see the amounts and here they see the hierarchy levels and so on. So, so there's a lot of uh, content out of the box, but the main idea of the, of the tool is to be able to, to store all the SQLs in one single place and have and not lose them anymore and also be able to easily share them and, and migrate them to other environments. So I think that was uh, a very quick walkthrough. Uh, you should be open up for questions. Uh, Andy, just quick one. Can you uh, share uh, with us about installation and demo version? Ah, yes, and that's good. License price because this will give the idea. Yes, okay. So. Um, the uh, also the idea of uh, or that's our, how our business model works. We have the first of all the installation is packaged up in one single uh, one single installation file. So we have one installation zip file that you can download. So you can go here to the web page and then to the download, and here you can you just fill in your um, contact details and then it would send you an email with the download link and the pricing is also shown here so we have a completely free community version which is completely free with no time limitation for up to 30 reports so if you just use a few reports or, or less than 30 then you can use it absolutely free for yeah without any time limits and then the licensed version is also quite reasonably priced. We have a price at 10 US dollar per user per month because we really want to help every EBS client with this tool and don't want to have the price becoming a showstopper that you think, oh, we cannot give this to, to our users because it's too expensive. So that's basically uh, the idea of the tool because also from the feedback that we have so far, it's very positive and, and everyone working with EBS should really benefit from the solution. That's what we think. And that's why we have this model. And also the free version, let me show you how that works in detail. So the, the tool comes with the license key. When you install it, first it comes with a, a proof of concept trial license key, which is valid for three months. So also in the tool, you could go here to license key and then you see which version there is currently installed and you see the license key here. This one is a real one. So this is customers. They would then when they purchase the, the tool, they would um, decide how many maximum users they would like to have a license key for. And then it counts the active users that are using the application. So it's not the EBS users. It's only the users actively using blitz report. Like in this on the, our test server, for example, we have five active users. We can also double click on the number of users and then it shows us a report uh, of these five users. So it starts a blitz report and then opens that blitz report. Once it's completed, it looks like, so we have these five test users on our demo server. So that's how it works. And the installation is very simple. So it's basically downloading the installation pack and then it's uh, basically point three here. So it's unzipping the file and then running the installation script. That's mainly it. And then we have a separate script to add the, the Blitz report automatically to all the menus, to, uh, to all the menus and the responsibilities, because the idea of the tool is to have the Blitz report function in every responsibility as a menu uh, entry so that users can quickly start blitz report without having to switch responsibility. We also in the latest version, we have introduced an integration to Oracle standard forms. So we have the ability to, um, to link the blitz report or certain blitz reports to Oracle standard forms. 
so that from you could launch Blitz report from the Zoom icon in Oracle Standard Forms then. So that is the installation and the business model. Are there more questions on this part or do you think it is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, this, this tool will be part of the e-business suite or will be open separately? It's, the, it's part of the eBusiness suite. So it's installed on the eBusiness suite server. It, do, it doesn't need a separate server because it is very tightly integrated. So it has the, it is basically just custom packages and uh, data objects compiled in the database, in the eBusiness suite database. And then it's a um, custom form compiled in, on the application server. So it is exactly the same technology as Oracle standard and that's why it's very nice for maintenance because it doesn't require additional skills or any separate server or anything like that. Okay. Is it supported by all of the versions? So you can course? just download and install it and then it's, it's there basically. Supported by all of the versions of PBS, like the old versions, it's like 1.3 or higher. Uh, it's the question if we support old versions. I think that was yes. okay. Yes, we even support version 11i. Uh, so, because we still have customers on that old version, the only thing is that our content, so the reports that we have in our library here, they are mainly written for release 12. So, but those 11i customers, they typically have their own reports and their own sequels. So we, we don't actively support or create reports for 11i customers, but it works for all EBS versions, 11i to 12 to 10. So we have even our demo server here, we upgraded to 12 to 10 already. That's always what we do in order to make sure that the text text still works with Blitz report. So we, it's, uh, and that's the nice thing that we build it in this, with the same technology as Oracle standard that basically it's uh, the text stack. Yeah, it, if, because we use the Oracle forms, it works on all EBS versions with very little code modifications. The only, difference between the 11i version and the release 12 version, for example, is that on release 12, there are delivery options. So in release 11i, there is no automated email sending functionality from Blitz report, which we have in release 12. Uh, yeah, that was actually my next question. So you do not have this, uh, this uh, feature of sending an email, report email, like uh, the user does not have to log into his responsibility to check oh, the yeah. Yes, we have that, actually. Can you receive the action? You have, can you show that first, please? Yes, we have. Like, like I want to, I, I, for example, like I want to check that which of the transactions at the end of the period are not, you know, the accounting is not generated or they're not posted to GL. I yeah, want exactly. the user to get an automated uh, report every yes. end of the month so he can do performance actions. Exactly. And that is the perfect use case for Blitz report because the, the nice thing is that it, because everything runs as a background concurrent, so we can, oh, let's see what emails we have in here. I know this is the editor. I think so we can enter an email either one or comma separated uh, let's say this one oh no this one of my colleagues so maybe I should when I send it I should send it send it to nobody I think this will not reach someone so when we select multiple, email, multiple can you select multiple or only yes it can be comma separated or I think even semicolon separated like this uh, at nginetics.com. And you can also use the editor window to have multiple, to put it in different lines. I think we even have a, I'm not sure if it was comma or semicolon, but it would uh, translate both separators to the one that is required in the end. Let's say info at nginetics.com. And we use the Orca standard delivery option. So if I would send a report like this now, oh, which one was, apparently there was uh, an invalid email, which one is invalid? And Can you just press enter? I hope it is the comma. Yeah, this one is accepted. So if I run it like this, so now you would uh, run it first once and now it would have sent the email with the attachment already. And if, and we use the Oracle standard delivery option. So we would see the, 
if we go to view requests, we would see the delivery options populated. So if we go to view details of that request and then look at the delivery options, we find the email here populated, you see here, with those emails. So apparently the Oracle separator is a comma, you see, uh, because it's 24. Nice. Nice. And, and then you could schedule this report. I mean, in this case, it doesn't have parameters, but uh, the, the thing, the reason why we would always start from our custom form from the Blitz report form first is that the parameters internally are always are just called parameter one to parameter 88. So for example, if you run a report with certain parameter restrictions, then you don't know that the six parameter is the operating unit or something because it's just called parameter six here. So you would first run it. Let me show you the one that I ran earlier. The, for example, all inventory values, this one has parameters. So if you would want to schedule the all inventory values report, you see all these parameters and you see, for example, parameter 11 was the currency, but you see it on our form, you see that the parameter name, but not on this screen. So if you want to schedule this one, you would submit it from this form and then simply copy it and schedule it. And then it would send the email, um, let's say at the end of the month. And we also have created a functionality that if the report does not uh, contain any data, it would not send the file. So that way you could create an alert functionality, let's say checking for a problematic, let's say for stuck interface records and checking every hour and scheduling the, re the report every hour. And then only if, it, if there's data found, it would send the email. And if there's no data found, it would not send anything. So that way you could do look at incremental um, you could incrementally look at problems and not always send the whole data. So like in, you, you could use it as an output interface that way then, for example. Andy, how Thanks. many reports uh, pre-developed are already included in this uh, tool? So we have we right now about 250 developed ourselves, which <laughs> are the ones uh, in the Nginetics category. So if you go to the library and then you filter for the Nginetics category, about 240 come out of the box with the installation. So these Nginetics reports, these are the ones which we develop ourselves. And of course the number is increasing uh, all the time because we keep on adding new reports. And, but then you have most customers, they actually, we, we have many customers when we do sessions with them after they installed and they are surprised about all our seeded content because they typically just install the tool and then import their own existing custom reports. And then they, they run only their own custom reports. And later on, they only discover all our uh, seeded reports. Um, yeah, but, but that, those are the reports that come out of the box. So we have various reports, especially from supply chain, we now have some uh, interesting planning reports. And of course we have reports from AP, AR, GL, so the typical modules, order management, typical modules that customers would have. And then also we have some more exotic model uh, modules like uh, service contracts, for example, because that comes from our own consulting background because some of my colleagues and myself, we worked on projects where there was service contracts. So we have specific reports <laughs> targeting those modules and yeah we, currently we are in the process to add reports for process manufacturing specifically because we recognize that oracle is not very oracle reporting for process manufacturing is not very good and that's why and now we have a couple of uh, customers working in that area that's why we specifically add reports for the, those modules <laughs> so that is the seeded content yeah, so any questions on, I think the scheduling is clear. What else can I show? Are there more questions on the scheduling, for example? One question which we often have as well is the multi-language. Let me also briefly mention that we have 
created um, right now we have 30, 13 languages supported so we have created out of the box a translation framework for column names so that you could use exactly the same sql statement in different languages so when a user then so you it reduces maintenance so you only have the sql statement in english and the column names in english for example creation date and then if a user runs it into a different language let's say in simplified chinese they would see the column headers showing up in the the rec in with the header name from this translation table here and right now we have 13 languages but we are i think by the end of the year we will have all languages in there which are supported by oracle ebs so for example we also have arabic and also the front end is translated to arabic already so um that is especially for the middle east region that was, was an important feature which we introduced a few months ago so it would also flip then from left to right in the excel sheet for example any more questions or did i miss anything uh, from the functionality yeah. Can we have a grouping in, in report uh, like uh, we have in uh, a group above or group left because the reports we, we have seen here are mostly in tabular form. Like uh, you mean having a total running total or do you mean like a pivot table? Uh, uh, like a pivot table and also like uh, uh, some details on the header, for example, uh, supplier name and then list is uh, all the payments and then another supplier name and lists all its payment like this yeah, yeah. Mm, the so how to explain it no the grouping we cannot do in the same way as the publisher for example that is the yeah that is the downside of having the uh, the good performance. So basically we optimize the tool for purely quick data dumps like this and not for output options. So for example, we, we don't go through XML. That's why it is so fast. But the downside of that is that we don't have those grouping formatting options. What can be done, however, by SQL is that you, because you can use the, in, in SQL, you can use the grouping set clause, for example, to insert a record and then you could have it showing up like this and then for the other records it's, it's blank then so that you have one extra line uh, so you would have it like this and then for every customer or vendor in this case you would have then uh, the records but it would still have always this column header like this and then but you could add for example running total lines like this and then uh, we also have an FAQ entry because it's not also for me, it was new to learn a while ago how to do this because SQL SQL offers a lot of functionality, which um, out of the box, it, I think it's running total, running total. This one can risk report show grant or running total. Yeah, the, the command is called grouping sets. So with a grouping set clause, we can create additional lines inside the data set, which is probably what you were after. So for example, for, for every vendor, if you have the vendor transactions, and then uh, every, let's say every, before the next vendor starts, you, you could enter a, by, with this grouping set clause, you could generate a line like this, and then you could uh, show the total amount for that vendor. And then uh, afterwards the detailed transaction. So that is possible, but it has to be done in SQL with an SQL statement, not with the tool. But SQL is very, very flexible. So also especially, would it work for you or? Yeah, I got the idea. Yes. Also, also a good example of the flexibility of the tool is, I was showing this GL balance by account hierarchy earlier already. So we have here, for example, we have a pivot statement. So pivot the data because that is used to bring the I think it was this one to bring the financial periods onto different columns like this. So that is done with the pivot operator. And in this case, because 
the user enters a parameter, let's say September 07, it needs to be composed dynamically. So we use the lexical anchor like this here, and then the resulting SQL statement uh, looks, we can also find the SQL statement in a log file. It looks like this, you see it dynamically, it inserts then the, uh, the period names to generate the pivot column. So here we use the pivot operator, and then we have these dynamically generated pivot column names. So it, there's a lot of flexibility to generate dynamic SQL with Blitz report, but everything has to be done in SQL, not in an additional formatting layer. And so that's the limitation. But, but for people like myself, it's, it's, more, it's actually comfortable like this because I'm, I'm more familiar with, with SQL than I am with uh, tools like BR Publisher templates and so on. So, mm. yeah. Okay. It's necessarily the sort of curiosity. Does it support the update, uh, update statements? Like, can we update the database from there or is it only for a report purpose? It is the idea is on that is only used for read only also for security reason that um, yeah that you can not uh, update uh, records through the front end because otherwise it, it would be a security gap but there is a possibility to execute pure SQL code before so we have some reports which require that for example we have the FA depreciation projection from Oracle standard, which we can run in the tool. I think on the 12 to 10, this version did not generate data, but I just wanted to show you the integration option. So we can, we, we have it for security reason. We have it uh, requiring a database package compiled in a database because then that can go through a security uh, QA <laughs> process and uh, change management process. So we can call PL SQL code, also custom PL SQL code. So we have, for example, these custom PL SQL packages for certain reports, like the asset depreciation projection. And so in that PL SQL package, you could, in theory, uh, modify data as well. So for example, you could populate a global temporary table, which then later on the Blitz report SQL would read. So that's the same way as a few Oracle, as some Oracle standard reports work. They, have a database package writing report data into temporary tables and then later on selecting from them. So that's possible through this integration. Does that answer the question? But apart from that, it's read only, basically. So you could not write an update SQL. Sure, so if you would try to do something like this, update, oh, update, then it complains. So that's basically the security. Okay, uh, more questions? I think uh, Andy, you covered uh, the whole thing and it at least gave the idea of the tool. So if there will be any questions uh, or uh, maybe someone is interested to have demo versions, we can coordinate with them they can contact and then you can further work with them or how they can move forward. Yes, please. So if you have, uh, if you would like to see a more detailed demo, or for example, if also we provide help with the installation. So it's not that you just download it. So we provide because we want to really help the US community to get started with this tool as, as easy as possible. So uh, you would not need to read the whole installation guide if you just want to install it quickly and let us know and we can jump on a call and uh, do the installation, go through the installation together because typically it's really just a few minutes. So uh, anything between 10 and 30 minutes, I would say, should the installation take. And yes, so please reach out to us then and let us know how we can help. Okay, good. If, if there are no Thank more you. questions, then we can... I think we can close now. Yes, and I would, would send out the recording then so that sure. you can share it with uh, the community. Sure, sure. Thank you, Andy, and thank to everyone for attending the session. Hope it was useful. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, uh, okay. Stella. Thank you okay. so much. Thanks, everyone, for attending. That was a pretty fruitful session. <laughs>
That's, I'm very glad to hear. Thank you. I appreciate your effort, Mr. Andy. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone, and have a good good afternoon. Bye bye. Bye bye.